So here underneath the turbo, the bigger line, oops, right there, is the feed and the smaller one's the return. The feed line comes right up here, goes right there, and this is where, I got my finger in there. This rubber one here that I got my finger on is where the fuel comes back from the filter, and this is the uh, line from the tank. So plan is to cut this off here somewhere and put a flare on there and then just bend, put a 90, RT, lay down. Put a 90 in here and just hose connect it right down so that it's a straight metal to metal and just a little piece of hose in between. And a couple of clips in there, hopefully that'll hold the pressure. I can put some zip ties in there or something to hold it down. And uh, then get rid of this mess. So none of this stuff coming over here. None of this return line coming here. Just this here goes straight in. And then the return line out of the pump comes here and goes down in the valley and goes up over here and comes along with it. And then over here somewhere, right here, we've got the return off the oil rail tying in there. That's all going to have to stay. And somewhere here also the, uh, yeah, these lines here, this return system goes up and around. Oh. It goes into the suction side. Does it? Oh no, the oil rail pressure. Weird. I just figured that out. Okay, so the pressure off or the relief off of the high pressure oil rail comes in and goes on the suction side. It goes straight back into the pump. Then the low pressure return off of the injectors goes over here and ties in right there into the return to the tank. So there's two different returns there. One of them's going back to feed the pump and the other one's going back to the tank. So that'll be good to remember for later. Try to fix some of that stuff up so it's not such a mess. All this crap, there's no use having it there. So that'll be the plan once we get all this stuff out of the way. Figure out a way to bend this to where it goes straight down in the pump and no more of this nonsense. So we've got the front set of injector lines off. Get them marked up the back set. In order to get at it, you need to pull this line here, which is your supply line for this left-hand rail. And down underneath the turbo there is a uh, hold-down bolt. Of course, it doesn't come out until it's ready to fall out, and then it falls right down underneath the turbo. So now I can finally pull this crossover line out of the way, and then pull these two lines off, and then I think I'm going to end up pulling the turbo off, which will mean pull this coolant return off and then uh, down there are the four bolts but I gotta still get the uh, 12 point number 12 sockets there to pull the up pipes off of the turbo and then I'm thinking that I'm gonna reroute all this here fuel lines come up this one and the return they come up here and then they go up over the head I'm thinking I might just reroute this to come along the front of the engine. Maybe mount it over here somewhere and run it straight up and over to the pump instead of coming up and over the, down in the valley like that. I don't know, just would make more sense to me. So if I'm bending tubing anyway, go find me some half inch stainless tubing and plumb it in right to the pump and pull that fitting out of the pump. Hopefully I can find a swedge lock fitting and I'll just Convert it all over to swedge lock, hopefully. We'll see what kind of fittings we've got going in the pump and what we can do there, but if we've got something threaded, I can hopefully find a swedge lock fitting to go in there and then we'll for sure not have any leaks because it's rated to 25,000 PSI. So we'll see how that goes. So got this other oil rail, or oil rail, high pressure fuel rail out. Uh, I got this little cover over top, I'm guessing it's a little heat shield to keep off the turbo heat off the end. And there's a plastic plug in there or a plastic thing on there, and this plug-in goes in the end of that. So you need to, it goes in there like that. And uh, yeah, get that out of the way. Getting close, just about to where you start pulling some tap covers. Got this, uh, I guess we've got injectors to pull out now. Just, uh, mark them up, wrap them up real good, and lay them out of the way. And then we're ready. Oh, this PCV system can come off now. Yay, finally. So injectors, once you get the bolt pulled out, and you just use this uh, 
little hold down piece, get your bar underneath there. Of course, it's always nice and easy to do it one-handed. And just give it a little pry, and up it comes, and it's right out there. So, as long as there's a spot for that, when you get up on the other side, this side here is all open and wide open on the passenger side, but a little hook bar once you get up on the other side there by the steering arm and whatever. So, this side here is wide open, and they come up pretty easy when you do that. Passenger side. Got the upper tap cover off. Looks like we got a rocker rail instead of individual rocker arms. That's pretty sweet. We'll pull all these off tomorrow as it's 9.45, time to go in and go to bed. Then we're gonna pull out all the push rods and we'll mark them, keep them separate so they can all go in the same hole where they came out of. And we'll, uh, yeah, wrap them up somehow to keep them safe and good to go with that. So, got quite a ways today. Got to get these heads off and uh, get them ready to go to town so they can go get decked and fire ringed and whatever all kinds of fancy stuff we're going to do to them. Uh, check all the guides and everything like that and then be good to go. So pulling off the lower valve cover has these little bolts going all the way around and in the middle here in the injector groove just dropped that on the ground has got the long ones. Pull those all out, all the way around there. Pick that up and put it away. And then I'm gonna take, where's my hammer went? Hey buds, oh, right there. Just gonna take this hammer and give it a little dead blow bump. I'm gonna pick it off of there. Maybe it'll break the, come on. Starting to rattle. Okay, I think I can pull it off now. <clears throat> Maybe not. Hmm. It's got these little bolts here, but they don't go through to anything in there, so I'm not sure what else is holding them unless it's just the gasket still sticky. Up to the uh, rocker shaft, I'm going to start in the back, move to the front, then here, then there, then there. Work our way back and forth to let it off evenly. I'm going to have to use an actual ratchet because otherwise they just fly right out. So take that off, lay it over there. We got cardboard laid out. We're going to mark all the push rods and everything as they come out and all the um, the uh, intake bridge or the valve bridges mark all them up as they come off so they can go back in the same spot uh, head bolts are all out we got the little bolts out of there um, thing I hadn't done yet so that'll focus right here holds on the return line or the fuel line that was the fuel line supply for the uh, DPF injector so that was still there and this right there a uh, little bracket mounts on right there. So pull that out and get this nut out of the way. And then it's ready to come off the head. I already wiggled it a little bit, a little bit of coolant coming on and out. So it's not fully drained, it's sitting here at a bit of an angle. So get that out of there. Stick that bolt back in the hole. Then uh, ready to lift the head off. And Manifolds are still on. We'll take intake and exhaust manifolds off once it's off of there and then we'll have a look see if we can see where the coolant was coming out or the Coolant wasn't coming out. The compression was passing. I'm not sure if that's gonna show up Yeah, it's rusty there. It shouldn't be a little bit of a whoops too jiggly a bit of a line right here I believe that'll be where it's been passing so Looks to me like that's where it failed to. Um, so you can see the cross hatching in there is still excellent. Cylinder cross hatching is in really good shape. I'll have a little look, closer look at all of the cylinders. Roll the engine up and down as once I get the other side off and see what the cross hatching looks like on all of them. Make sure we don't have any scarring anywhere. Uh, for the amount of miles on the truck, 
The engine looks in good shape besides this head gasket here. We'll look at the bottom of the head next and see what we can see on that. Flip it over here.